In this crash course, we're going to cover all of the basics that you need to get started using Node.js. What is Node.js? Well, it's not a language, it's a JavaScript runtime built on Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine. This means that you can run standard JavaScript outside of the browser. So if you already know JavaScript, there's no need to learn a new language for backend operations. You can easily use Node.js to create a web server, an API, and many other use cases. Node.js is really fast because it's non-blocking and runs asynchronous operations. Now there are some prerequisites. Before learning Node.js, you should have a good understanding of JavaScript, including ES6 Plus features like arrow functions, array methods like map, filter, and reduce, async await, promises, modules, etc. You should also understand basic fetching from the client side and how to use JSON data. Now, if you're not up to speed on all of those, I do have videos that can get you started. The links will be in the description below. Now, the first thing that we need to do is install Node.js. So go to nodejs.org and download the appropriate file for your operating system. I'm running the most current version, which is at the time of this recording, 15.8.0. And you can check what version you're running by typing node-version. There are several differences in the way that JavaScript works in Node.js versus in the browser. In the browser, we have the DOM or document object model. But in Node.js, there's no document and no elements. So we can't call document.querySelector or anything like that in Node.js. In Node, there also isn't a window object. Instead, we have the global object. Also, the way that Node handles importing modules is slightly different. Let's take a look at a very basic Hello World example in Node.js to demonstrate. A link to the source code for this video will be in the description below. All right, so we have a server.js file here. And the first thing that we're going to do is create a const and we'll name that HTTP and that's going to equal require and then HTTP. So Node.js comes with a bunch of built-in modules and we need to import them as needed. And notice the way here that we're importing the module. By default, Node.js uses common.js, which has this require syntax. You might be used to ES6 modules where you use import and we'll get to that a little bit later. So next we're going to define our host name. So we'll create a const host name. We'll make that equal to process.env.hostName or localhost if that's not defined. And then we'll create another const of port. We'll make that equal to process.env.port or port 3000 if that's not defined. So part of our global object is our process. And then within the process, we have our environmental variables. So just like in the browser, we might have window.document, but in Node, we don't have window. So we have global dot process and many other methods. But just like in the browser, we don't have to type window dot document. We could just type document dot query selector, right? Well, here in node, we don't have to type global either. Instead of typing global dot process, we can just type process. So next we're going to create the HTTP server. So we'll create a const and then we'll name that server. And we'll make that equal to HTTP dot create server. Now within that, we'll have an arrow function and this is going to have a request and a response. So we'll use the response and we're gonna set a status code. We'll make that equal to 200. And then we'll take our response and we're also gonna set our headers. We're gonna set our content type and we'll make that equal to text plain. And then we'll set our response.end and we're going to send the text, hello world. And lastly, we need to start the server by having it listen on the port and host name provided. So we'll say server.listen, we'll give it the port the host name, and then we'll have a callback arrow function. In here, we'll console log, server is running at HTTP slash slash, and then we'll give it the host name and colon the port. So now to run this code, we'll just open up our terminal. We'll type node and then the name of the file, which is server.js, so server, and we actually don't have to type .js, so it's just server, node server. And now we get server is running at HTTP localhost 3000. So if we click on this, we'll get localhost 3000, hello world. And then if we open up the console and we go to network and we refresh this, we'll see our localhost status 2000. And we can also see our content type is set to text plain. So congratulations, you just created your first web server. So now to stop this process in the terminal, we we'll just press control C and now it's no longer running. So we've already seen the process method on the global object. There are also a couple of other things that we have access to. So if we type global and then 
underscore underscore, we have dir name and file name. So let's go ahead and console log these out. All right, then we'll save this, open up our terminal, and we can just run node server again. And you can see that the file name is the full path, including the file name, and dir name is just the full path. So these can come in handy when we need to read and write to files on the server. That brings us to the file system module. In order to perform file system operations, we need to import the FS module from Node. So let's start out by reading a file. I have a hi.txt file here, and it just says hello world in it. So we're going to read it. The first thing we'll do is we'll create a const. We'll call it FS, and that is going to equal require in the FS. And then we'll say FS dot read file and we're going to pass in our high text and then that has a callback arrow function and that callback gives us an error and data so within that we'll say if there's an error then console dot error the error and then return and if not console dot log the data all right so let's save that we'll pull up our terminal let's clear that and then we'll say node server again and notice that we're getting a data buffer, not the actual text from the document. So to get the text, we need to either add data.toString. So let's save that and give that a try. So now we get the text, hello world. Or instead of data.toString, we can specify the encoding type. So right here we could say this is UTF-8. And now if we save this and we run it again, we'll get the same thing with our text. So now let's add a console log outside of our function. So we'll say console log, log from outside. So I'll save this and then run it. You notice here that we get log from outside first and then our hello world text. So this demonstrates the asynchronous nature of Node. So even though this code is first, it takes it a split second to read that file. While it's reading the file, it's going to move on and run console log. And then it's going to console log the data after it's been returned. Each node module also has a synchronous version. The standard method is asynchronous, which means that it will continue running the code in the background and then run the callback function when it has finished. The synchronous version is blocking and it will stop the code execution until the process is complete. So we could change this read file to read file sync. So this is the synchronous version. We're still going to pass all of this, but there is no callback. So we'll take that out. And now, because there's no error handling here, we're going to wrap this in a try catch. So we'll say try, and then catch. We might have an error here. So we'll console error the error. So let's turn this into a const. We'll call this data. And then after that, we'll console log the data. So now let's run this one. And this time we get hello world first and then log from outside. So it waits for this to finish before it continues and then it runs the console log from outside second. Now instead of importing the entire FS module, we can also do destructuring. So for these instances, we could have destructured and said we only wanted read file and read file sync. And then instead of fs.readfile, we would just call read file sync. So next, let's look at writing files. So let's change these to write file and write file sync. Say write, and we'll get rid of all of this. All right, so we'll create a const, we'll call it new content, and that's going to equal, this is some new text, and then we'll call write file, we'll pass it our high text file, and then we'll insert our new content here. And this is going to have a callback, and we might get an error in this callback, so we'll grab that. And then we'll say if there's an error, then we'll console log the error, and return. And if not, we'll console log content written. All right, let's save that, and then let's run this. So we'll open up the terminal, and let's run node server again. And we have content written. So let's go over to our high text and we see this is some new text. Now notice here that the content has been replaced. It no longer says hello world. So that's the default behavior of write file. And we can change this behavior by adding a flag. So if we go back in here and then after the content, we'll add an object and this is going to be flag 
and we're going to give it the flag of A for append. So now when we save that, and then let's run it again, content written, we'll go back over here. And so now we have, this is some new text, and right after that, this is some new text. So it's appending it right after. So again, we can use the synchronous version, which is write file sync. So again, we'll need a try catch. We'll say write file sync. We'll pass it our text file, and we'll pass it the new content. And then we're going to console log content written. And then if we have an error, we'll console error the error. All right, so let's save that. And again, open up our terminal, content written. We go to our terminal here. And again, it overwrote the file because we didn't pass it any flags. So instead of messing with the flags, we could just use the append file method. So here we could just change this to append file. And we don't need the sync. And then let's change this new content. We're going to add a new line by adding a backslash in. That's a new line character. And this is some more new content. All right. And then we're not going to use the synchronous version. So let's get rid of the try catch. So this time we'll use append file. We'll give it the text file, the content. And then we have our callback with a possible error, where if we have an error, we'll console error the error. And then return. And then if not, we'll console log content written. All right. So let's save that. And we'll run that again, node server. And we have content written. And we go over here. And we have our new line. This is some more new text. That's much easier. All right, we can also rename files. So that's pretty easy. Let's go up here and let's bring in rename from the FS module. And we won't need this. And then everything is almost the same. So we're going to rename. We're going to give it our original file name and then the new file name. So let's say hello.txt. And then again, we might have an error. So we'll console error that return. Otherwise, we'll say file renamed. All right, so we'll save that, go back to our console, run it again. And now we can see this high text has been deleted. So let's open up our files. And we can see now we have a hello text instead of a high text. And there it is, it's just been renamed. All right, and then we can also delete files. And you might think that the module is delete, but it's actually unlink. All right, so we'll import the unlink and we'll change this to unlink. And then we just need to reference the file, which now is hello text. And then we possibly might get an error. So we'll do all the same stuff again. And then we'll just say file deleted. All right, we'll save that and run it. And now we can see hello text has been deleted. Open up the files. And we can see that it is gone. All right, next, let's create a simple module. So in my main file, I want to add some numbers. So I'm going to say const add nums is going to equal require. And then we're going to pull in a file that we're going to create called add nums. And then after that, I want to create a const called sum. And that's going to equal add nums. And we're going to pass it two and two. And then after that, we'll just console log sum. So we want to create this file now, add nums. So go over here, we'll create a file, add nums.js. And then within this, we'll create our function. So function add nums is going to take a and b. All right, so here we're just going to return a plus b. And then we need to export this. So we say module.exports add nums. All right, so let's go back. And so we have this, we're importing it here using require. So let's open up our terminal. And let's say node server, and we get the answer 2 plus 2 equals 4. And we can do this using ES6 modules as well. So if you're used to that export import, we can go to add nums. Instead of module.export, we can say export with no S, just export. And then we wrap add nums in curly braces. So export add nums, just like that. And now in our server JS, instead of using the require syntax, we can say import and then add nums. And that is going to be from dot slash add nums. Now there's two different ways to go about this. We can either change our file extension from .js to .mjs, which is a module JavaScript, 
or we can add an attribute to the package.json file. So let's try the first way. So if we go to our files, we'll need to rename these to .mjs. And then on our server where we're importing it, we do have to specify the extension .mjs. All right, so we save that. All right, so now we can run the server again, but this time we have to use node server dot mjs we have to specify the extension here and now we get four i don't really care for this method so let's change these back to js and then the other option is to alter our package json now we don't have a package json yet so this is part of keeping track of node modules and your project information so to get our package json we're going to say npm init dash y so we're going to get into npm in a little bit but for now we're just going to run this and it's going to create our package json so this has the name of our project a version an optional description it thinks that this is the main file but it's actually server and then we can run some scripts and we're going to go over this in more depth than just a little bit but in this we're just going to add type and then module now it knows that we should use es6 modules so let's save that. And now we still have to specify the .js on here when we're importing. So let's save that, go to the terminal, and let's run node server, and we get our answer. Now this time we didn't have to specify server.js, just node server. But we do have to specify the .js here. Also note that when using ES modules in node, we no longer have access to require, exports, module.exports, underscore file name, or underscore dir name. So because of all of these minor gotchas, you're most commonly going to see the common JS syntax of module.exports and require. So we're going to continue to use those, but I just wanted to show you that you can use ES modules. All right, so now let's go back to the HTTP module and we're going to create an actual web server. We'll start with that basic example again. So we're going to create a const of HTTP. We'll make it equal to require HTTP. So we'll bring that module in. And then we're going to use that HTTP.createServer. And then that has an arrow function where we have a request and a response. So we're going to take that response and we're going to set the status code to 200. Now's a pretty good time to look at all of the different status codes. So the code ranges are 100 for informational, 200 are success codes, 300 are redirects, 400 are user or client errors, and 500 are server errors. So common ones, you'll get 200 is okay. So that means everything is good. 301 is a resource moved. 404 is not found. And 500 internal server error. So now back in the code, we'll use the response to set our header. We're going to make the content type text plain again. And then we're going to response.write hello world. And then we have to response.end. After that, we can listen. We'll listen on port 3000. And then we are going to console log server is running. All right, so pretty simple. Let's save that and run it. Open up our terminal, node server, and it says server is running. So now if we go to localhost port 3000, now we get hello world again. All right, so let's kill this, control C. It's always good practice to set our port. So we'll say const port is equal to process.env.port or 3000. And then we'll take port here and we'll just replace that 3000. We always want to set our port in our environmental variables once we deploy. So this time I'm going to set our HTTP to a constant. So we'll say const server is going to equal HTTP and then create server. And then here we'll say server.listen. Now the last time we've specified our host name and we can do that. If we don't do it, then it just defaults to localhost. But we'll just change this console log out to server is listening on and then the port. So now I also want to show you that we can write and then we can write some more. So let's alt shift down and we'll say hello world again. And then we can end it or within the end, we can also pass data. So we can say the end. So let's save that and then run it again. Server is listening on port 3000. So let's open that up. And now we have hello world, hello world again, and then the end. All right, so that doesn't look very good. This is not great. So let's look at sending some HTML. So that is pretty simple. So here we just need to change our content type to text HTML instead of plain. 
And then instead of writing all of these, we're going to get rid of the rights. We actually don't need any rights if we just have one thing that we want to write. So on the end, we're going to change this to some HTML. So we'll just say h1, and then we'll type hello world. We'll save that. And then now our server is still listening. So we saved it, but we have to restart our server. So if we go back here and we refresh, it still has the same thing. So we have to restart our server. So let's kill the server, control C, run it again. And then let's go back to our browser. And now if we refresh, we get an H1 with hello world. All right, so now we're gonna put everything that we've learned all together. We're going to send an HTML file. So we need to access that file. In order to do that, we need to import the file system module. All right, so we'll create a const of FS and that's gonna equal require FS. And then everything else is going to be very similar. So we're gonna create our server. We're gonna set our status code, set our header. And then instead of res.end, we'll use fs.readfile and we'll pass in the file that we want to read. It's an index.html. And then we have our callback, which has the error and data. So then we'll check to see if we have an error. We'll console error the error and then res.end. Else, we'll res.write the data and then res.end. Now to shorten this, since we're just sending one thing, we could just res.end on the data and remove the write. So let's save that. I'm going to show you here. We just have an index.html file. It's just a very simple file that has hello world and a little bit of styling. This is not an HTML or CSS course, so we're not going to look at that too much. So let's go ahead and run this. So now again, our server is already running, so we need to kill it and then run it again. Now let's check it out in the browser. And there we go. Hello world. All right, next, let's look at some basic routing. Right now, we're sending this file no matter what URL or method that we're using. So if we go up here, localhost.3000 slash about, we're still getting the same file. We want to be able to route certain files to certain URLs. So the first thing let's do is in here, let's go ahead and console log our request.url and our request.method. So you can see these. All right, so let's save that. And now again, we need to restart the server. So control C and then run node server. Now it's listening. And as we refresh the browser, watch our console. Now we can see we went to slash about using the method of git. And it looks like we're also looking for a favicon. If we go back to just slash, just localhost 3000, and we'll get slash, which is just the root, and then git. And again, we're looking for the favicon, just ignore that one. So that's how we can tell which URL we're going to and what method. Okay, so let's go ahead and kill that server and then we'll make some alterations here. So let's get rid of the console log. So now instead of hard coding this index.html, we need to do some checks first and then pass that in as a variable. So let's create a variable of path. So we'll say let path equal, and we'll just say dot slash, that's the current directory. Now, if you have many different pages, you're probably gonna wanna create a view folder and put everything in there. For now, we're just demonstrating, so we're just gonna keep the root directory here. So now let's use a switch. So we'll say switch, and we're gonna pass in our request URL. And then we'll say case slash, so if it's the root directory, then we're going to add to path index.html and then break. And then we'll say case slash about. So if we go to slash about, we'll add to the path about.html and then break. And then we'll have a default. So anything else is going to go to 404.html and then break. All right, and so then we have this path here that we can now pass right here. And then everything else will be the same. We just need to create this about and this 404. So let's go over to our files here. So in our index, I'm just gonna change hello world to home. And then let's just copy everything. We'll save that. We'll create a new file. We'll say about.html. We'll paste in the same HTML, we'll just change this to about. And then we'll create a 404.html. Paste that in and change this to 404. All right, so let's close those out. We can save this and then let's run it. Node server listening on port 3000. Let's bring the browser over. Now, if we refresh, this should change to home. There we go. And then if we go to slash about, we get the about page. And if we go to anything else, I'll just type something in there. 
and we get the 404. So again, back to slash, and we're back to home. Now back in here, we should probably change the status code. I have the status code to 200 every time. So we should probably move the status code 200 here because it's not always a 200 if we have a 404. So let's go ahead and cut that. And if we go to index.html, that would be a 200. About would be a 200. Uh, but the 404, that is going to be a 404. We can also easily do redirects. So maybe instead of showing a 404, we just want to redirect them back to the home page. So instead of this default going to the 404, we'll take the path out and we're going to change the status code to 301. That's going to be a redirect. Then we're going to set res.setheader and we're going to set our location to flash. All right, so let's save that and then run it again. It's still running, so we have to restart it. We'll go back to our browser. And now if we go to some random URL, it's always going to go home unless we go to slash about. And then again, if it's just something random, it's going to go home. So it's redirecting. All right, now let's talk about NPM packages. Included with Node is a package manager called NPM Node Package Manager. Node includes a lot of great modules already, but there are even more remote packages available that you can download and include in your projects. And we do that by using NPM in our terminal. So let's pull up the terminal. So like I showed you before, we used NPM init-y to initialize our project and create a package.json file. So this time we'll do NPM init without the dash y. So the dash y accepts all of the default options. So this time we'll take a look at the options. All right, so it's going to ask us a package name. It defaults to the folder name. We'll just say node demo. And then the version, we'll just stick with one. A description is optional. I'll just hit enter. Entry point server JS, that's what we want. A test command, we'll just leave it blank for now. Git repository is optional. Keywords are optional. Author is optional. I'll say code stacker. And then the license, the default is ISC. That's fine. We'll just hit enter. And then is all of this okay? We'll say enter for yes. And we're done. So now we can open up our package JSON and we can see all of the stuff that we entered right in here. Now before, every time we made changes to our server, we would have to stop our server and restart it. We're going to install a package that is going to make our lives so much easier. It's called Nodemon. So we can do that a couple of ways. We'll open up the terminal again and we can say npm i for install and then dash g for global Nodemon and that will install Nodemon globally on our computer but I prefer to set it as a dev dependency of the package. So we're gonna say npm i dash capital D for dev dependency and then nodemon. All right, so we'll hit enter there. It's going to download and install it. And now if we look in our package JSON, we can see dev dependencies nodemon. I prefer to have it in our package just in case another developer doesn't have it installed globally. So now notice after we installed these, we'll open up our files, and now we have this node modules folder. And this contains all of the modules and dependencies for Nodemon and for any other modules that we might install. Now you should never have to open or make any changes to anything within the node modules directory. And when sharing your code with someone, you'd never want to include that folder either because it contains a lot of files and can get very large. So in a bit, we're going to upload this to GitHub and we don't want to include the node modules folder. So we're going to create a file here and we're going to call it dot git ignore. And then within this file, we're just going to specify node modules. We want it to ignore our node modules folder and not upload it. In fact, if we were to download this project from GitHub, it would come without a node modules folder. So if I delete this node modules folder, I can easily reinstall it by just typing npm i, i for install. Now it's going to go ahead and download all of the dev dependencies and packages that we need for this project as defined in our package JSON file. Now let's edit our scripts to help us out here. All right, so we already have a node start, which is going to start our node server.js. I'm going to change build to dev. And for this one, it's going to be node mon server. All right, so node mon is a node monitor. Anytime we make any changes to any files, it will automatically reload the server for us. So now to run these, instead of typing node server to start the server, we can just type npm run and then one of these scripts, either dev 
or start. So it will say dev. Now we can see nodemon is running and it has started the server and it's watching for any changes. So if we go into our server and let's go back here and I wanna change this back to the way we had it by showing that 404 instead of redirecting. All right, so we're gonna say the default, we're gonna add this path here and that's gonna be the 404. And then this is going to be a status code 404. So now let me open up the terminal and then watch whenever I save it, it's automatically restarted. So now if I bring the browser back in and I'm not going to refresh, I'm just going to go to some random URL and we get a 404. And then if I go to about, I get about and then home. So in development, you'll want to run the dev script and then on the server, we'll run start. So let's find out how to do that next. We're going to deploy this to Heroku. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we need to upload this to GitHub. So we're gonna go over to our source control. And first we need to initialize a repository. So let's do that. And then we need to make a commit. So again, this course is not on Git and GitHub. I do have Git and GitHub videos. Links will be in the description. So we're going to make a commit here. We'll just say initial commit. All right, and then we're going to upload this to GitHub. So we'll just click this little cloud icon here. And then I'll upload this. We'll say node crash course. And I will make this a private repository for now. And that's going to upload it and we can open it in GitHub if we want. But what we're gonna do next is go to Heroku. So on Heroku, let's zoom in a bit here. So I've already logged in, it's free to sign up and log in. And then we're going to create a new app and you can name your app or you can just leave it blank and Heroku will name it for you. So we're just going to create the app and now we need to select our deploy method. You could use the Heroku CLI or we could just connect directly to GitHub. That's the easiest way. So we'll say GitHub, we'll go down here and I'm already signed into GitHub through Heroku. So I just need to find that repo. That was node dash crash course. And then we'll search. And there it is. So we're going to connect. And then we'll deploy this branch. And you can see here that it is running everything. It's building, it's deploying, build successful. And there we go. It has been deployed and we can view it right here. We'll click that. And there it is. We have this awesome URL, gentlebeach57916.herokuapp.com. All right. So now if we go to slash about, that works. And then anything else goes to 404. And we can go back to the home right there. All right. So we have built our first Node web server and deployed it to Heroku. Congratulations. Hope this crash course helps you out and gets you started using Node.js. I'll have more in-depth videos on Node.js coming up soon including how to use the Express framework. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.